Welcome to our review of the brand new Peloton Guide, where I will be covering all of the good, the bad, and the ugly, because as we dig into Peloton's first piece of strength hardware, well, there's a lot of both positive and negative things to talk about. My name is Colin with Connect the Watts. This review is sponsored by WatchLink, and if that sounds good to you, let's get started. All right, so first, let's discuss exactly what is included with the $295 Peloton Guide. First, you have the guide itself, which is simply a nice looking and well-designed camera. Now there is a cover included on the front, which you can slide over the camera if you want extra privacy when you're not using it. Also included is a camera mount, which can be adjusted in multiple ways, allowing the camera to move up and down or be placed on top of a screen. Also here is a fairly nice looking remote. And while the remote works well, I have found that pressing the buttons, especially the upper buttons within the circle, can be sometimes cumbersome to use as you can't really feel exactly where those buttons are until you press down. Also included is an HDMI cable and a USB-C charger, which will be what supplies power to the Peloton Guide. Now, once you get the Peloton Guide all set up, the process to get everything started is pretty simple. It takes about 10 to 15 minutes to ensure all of the camera angles and the voice recognition is working properly. But after that, you are good to go. Now for this review, the way I want to structure this is to first really talk about what I actually like about the Peloton Guide before we get into some of the things it could improve on or that I was a bit disappointed with and some of the really ugly things that are quite frustrating about this. But I do wanna be clear that there are a lot of good things here. For example, the UI and menu system is excellent, which I think by now we would expect from Peloton given how good their UI is across all of their equipment. And there is everything here that you would expect from being able to browse classes, or through collections, or to filter workouts, or to take programs, or just check out your profile and previous classes taken. The only thing that I really found missing here is that currently there's no area to look or sign into challenges. You'll still have to do that on the app or on your bike or tread. Now when you take a class, what the guide does is it takes the video of you and places you within the screen so you can see both yourself and the instructor. And there are a lot of camera options to choose from. Again, the UI is really, really good here. You could have the video of yourself small and the class big. You could have yourself large on the screen and the class small. You could have yourself side to side or stacked above and below, or even just have the camera off depending on what you want. And this is all really easily changed while you take a class in the menu, or you can even change these views via voice commands. And the voice commands here are actually pretty good and useful. For the most part, I've never been a really big fan of using voice versus a remote, but in this situation, it works really well, especially in strength classes because, well, Peloton classes, they tend to be really fast paced and depending on what type of workout you really wanna get out of it, being able to pause the class is really useful. In fact, I will pause a lot of strength classes between sets, not because I can't continue on, but because for me, I feel in order to get an optimal strength workout, I sometimes need just a little bit longer than the class has. Now there's a few other things about the actual Peloton Guide camera that I like a lot. One of which is that it has a really wide angle lens, so you don't really have to be too far back away from it in order to take the class. I would say as long as you have about four feet of space between you and the camera, you're probably going to be good to go. Another nice thing about this camera is that if you are far away, it'll actually zoom in the lens on you so that you look closer up on the screen. Now the big selling point of the Peloton Guide is its movement tracker, which essentially just tracks how much you are moving during each set. Now the goal of each set is to move enough to allow this sweat droplet to fill all of the way up. And if you do, that set will be counted. And if you don't, Peloton simply will not count that set as complete. So it's either a yes, I did it all the way or I didn't type of situation. And while I definitely have a lot of problems with how this thing works and is implemented here, in terms of what is good about it, is it does give you an incentive to continue pushing yourself throughout the set and to not stop the set early. It also allows for a bit more gamification during these workouts, which is always a good thing because it creates a little bit of a positive feeling towards completing these strength workouts, which they were kind of missing before. Now, another thing which might be the best thing added here is the ability to see the movements for every single class, both before the class and during the class, you can see what you are doing, how long left you have to do it, and what the next movement is coming up. 
And additionally, Peloton has announced that those who have the Peloton Guide will be getting exclusive weekly programs built from the live classes that are planned each week. Additionally, it looks like most, if not all Peloton strength programs moving forward will have a limited exclusivity on the Peloton Guide by about seven weeks before it is released to everybody else. And finally, the Peloton Guide is able to connect via Bluetooth to your headphones and some heart rate trackers, although at this point, there's no way to connect an Apple Watch. And that's why I wanna talk briefly about today's sponsor, Watchlink. See, Watchlink makes this USB pod that you can just plug into any port. And what this pod does is it automatically takes the information coming from your Apple Watch and converts it and sends it out to any other fitness equipment within your home. It works great for the Peloton Guide, as well as the Peloton Tread and Peloton Bike. And you know, for me, I have a ton of devices here I'm always testing. So I just leave this plugged in in the room and it sends it out to all the devices. So I never have to worry if any of my equipment does or does not connect to the Apple Watch because I know it'll connect to this. You can check out and learn more about Watchlink in the description below. Now let's shift over to what's not so good. So so let's start with the body tracker. And so what this body tracker is, and you can find it on your profile, whether or not you actually own the Peloton guide. And what it does, or at least what it's supposed to do, is be able to figure out what sort of muscle groups you've been using over the past seven or 30 days and give you a visual representation of how much you're working in certain areas or how much you're not working in other areas, and hopefully guide you with this and other suggestions on what other workouts you may want to do to have a more well-rounded program. Now, there are a couple problems with this, one of which is I don't think currently this actually works accurately as I pretty much did an equal amount of work for upper and lower body, although it wasn't showing that I had done much upper body at all. And that leads to another problem altogether. And that is that there are some muscle groups that you do want to work more often than others. And the way this is set up, it seems like it just wants balance across the board, which is not really how good training programming works. So I'm really concerned about how useful this thing will be. And as far as it is currently, I would say that not only is it not useful, but it would actually probably be worse to use it as a guide than just to ignore it altogether. Now, the next big issue to talk about is the AI and the movement tracker that the camera uses. So when you see that box being placed around you, what I think that is doing is it's trying to make it seem like it's actually a very smart camera doing highly technical things when in reality it's not. In fact, not only does this camera not track reps, it doesn't even distinguish between different types of movements. So instead of pressing or squatting, you could just be doing jumping jacks or waving your arms around and it'll track that as the actual movement. There's very little intelligence here in the AI. It simply is able to see where you are and try to determine if there's any movement within that box. And if you're able to keep continuous movement during about 75 to 80% of each set, then you will fill up your little sweat drop to get credit. Now, the good thing about this is that you don't actually have to face the camera in any given direction, and you can have any modification to a movement that you want to and still get credit, but it also takes away my favorite way to take Peloton strength classes. You see, any good strength and conditioning coach will tell you that you have to sort of individualize these workouts to do what is best for you, your body, and what's gonna be optimal to get the best results. And for me and a lot of others, my big suggestion suggestion during Peloton classes is to pick a shorter amount of reps, complete the set early, and take the remainder of the time as an additional rest because I think that's a more effective training strategy. And what the guide does, because it's focused on activity during those sets, is it completely discourages that altogether. So no matter how many reps you actually finish, unless you're actually moving through about 80% of that entire interval, you won't get any credit for doing it. And then of course, this leads into to the $295 price and the question of what value the Peloton Guide actually brings. And this is where things start to get ugly. Because when I think about what the benefits are from having the Peloton Guide, such as the body tracker and workout suggestions, the improved class UI with countdowns for each movement, the exclusive programs generated weekly, and also the time exclusive strength programs coming, none of it none of it actually has anything to do with this piece of hardware. 
these are just benefits that Peloton has decided that are not worth giving to their members who may have already bought a $2,000 bike and pay close to $500 yearly for their membership. No, most of the benefits and improvements are completely and unnecessarily locked behind a $300 piece of hardware that by itself has very little practical value. So here's how I see it. The Peloton guide will be worth it to the most dedicated Peloton members because of the extra content and the nice added features like those movement lists and countdowns while you work out. I feel like it's better to imagine that you're paying $295 for an improved and upgraded Peloton membership and then somehow this camera gets delivered to you as a free extra product just for being a valued member. The biggest joke to me though is that they want digital members to not only buy this but to pay double the price for their membership to use it and that's double the price to watch a sweat drop fill up and get some limited exclusive content. Now I'm not sure what Peloton was thinking when they created this. My best guess is after they acquired a company which was using a smart camera to make a connected fitness yoga mat last year, they decided that they need to make something to show for it and so quickly threw the Peloton guide together without really the time or effort needed to make it actually valuable. They probably figured because they were doing so well at the time that Peloton members will buy anything, especially if they use it as a paywall to lock additional features and exclusive content. And it's a shame because Peloton's equipment is otherwise fantastic and this is nowhere near the same quality. Unfortunately, in my opinion, the Peloton guide is no more than a modern day shake weight, except with the advantage of having membership perks. But of course, I know people's opinion on this are gonna be different across the board. So if you want to share your opinion, I really encourage you to do so in the comments below. Thanks so much, appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.